will be discussing about an important topic that is edema and it refers to the accumulation of fluid in the extracellular space that is the interstitium whereas if there is generalized edema present all over the body and is visible grossly then we use the term anasarca now let's say this is an artery this is the capillary following it and this is the vein draining the capillary and normally what happens is where the blood comes from the artery to the arterial to the capillary some fluid gets filtered through this endothelium into the interstitium and this fluid some of it is taken by the tissue and the later and the remaining is drained by the lymphatic back into the venous system and this filtration of the fluid is controlled by the starling forces the endothelial junctions and the lymphatic drainage if these three are function properly in that case the amount of fluid that is accumulating in the interstitium is very less whereas if the starling forces are deranged or there is increased permeability of the endothelium or if there is blockage of the lymphatic drainage in this cases there will be increased accumulation of the fluid in the interstitium and this will lead to edema now the starling forces you might all know of are the hydrostatic pressure of the capillary and the oncotic pressure of the interstitium these both increase the filtration of the fluid whereas the oncotic pressure of the capillary which is determined by the serum albumin decreases the fluid filtration so in condition where the hydrostatic pressure of the capillary increase or the oncotic pressure of the capillary decrease or the permeability of the endothelium increase or the oncotic pressure of the interstitium increase or the lymphatic drainage decrease in all these cases there will be increased fluid accumulation and this will lead to edema now increased hydrostatic pressure can occur either due to venous obstruction or if there is increased blood coming through the artery into the capillary now the venous outflow obstruction can occur in different causes like deep vein thrombosis varicose vein any pelvic or intra abdominal mass that may impinge the iliac veins that can lead to uh, increased hydrostatic pressure also if the patient has uh, congestive heart failure or a constrictive pericarditis in these case also there will be a venous congestion and then will lead to increased hydrostatic pressure of the capillary and then will lead to edema whereas if there is increased blood to the arteries which can occur in case of ckd as in case of ckd there will be volume overload or if there is secondary increased reabsorption of sodium and dct uh, occurring in that case also there will be increased hydrostatic pressure and this increased reabsorption of the sodium and water in dct can occur whenever there is decreased blood to the kidney as this will lead to activation of the ras and this will lead to increased absorption of salt and water and this can again occur in case of chfr so these can be the condition in which there will be increased accumulation of the fluid in the interstitium due to increased hydrostatic pressure now uh, if the hyd- oncotic pressure of the capillary decrease there will be decreased fluid uh, pull of the fluid back into the capillary and thus will lead to increased accumulation and it will occur whenever there is in- decreased albumin in the blood like in case of cld where there is decreased production in case of nephrotic syndrome where uh, there is increased excretion in case of malnutrition where again there is increased decreased intake as well as increased catabolism of the protein and the last one is the protein losing entropy in which again there is increased loss of protein through the stools in this case is also there will be edema occurring now if there is increased permeability of the endothelium occurring secondary to inflammation which can occur in case of cellulitis this will again lead to edema or if there is increased oncotic pressure of the interstitium which will occur due to increased protein accumulation within the interstitium there will again be edema and it occurs in case of hypothyroidism why in hypothyroidism in hypothyroidism the basal metabolic rate decreases so any catabolism decreases so the catabolism of protein also decreases so the protein accumulation increase and this will pull more fluid out into the interstitium and thus there will be edema also as if the lymphatic drainage gets obstructed in that case also there will be increased accumulation and it can occur either in case of tumor like it can occur in case of breast cancer or it can occur due to trauma it can occur due to filariasis it can be congenital or it can be radiation induced so these are the causes in which there can be edema present in the body now in cases 
ए बी सी दैट इज़ ड्यू टू इंक्रीज हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेशर डिक्रीज ऑनकॉटिक प्रेशर इन द कैपिलरी एज वेल एज इंक्रीज प्रमेबिलिटी देर इज मेनली इंक्रीज फ्लूड दैट इज गोइंग इन टू द इंटरशीशियम सो इन दिस केस देर विल बी पिटिंग एडिमा प्रेजेंट दैट इज ऑन प्रेसिंग द एरिया ऑफ द एडिमा फॉर थर्टी सेकेंड देर विल बी डिप्रेशन क्रिएटेड वेर एज इन कंडीशन लाइक हाइपोथरिज्म वेयर देर इज इंक्रीज प्रोटीन एक्यूमुलेशन देर इज हार्डनेस प्रेजेंट सो देर विल नॉट बी एनी डिप्रेशन क्रिएटेड इफ द प्रेशर इज मेंटेन सो इट विल शो अ नॉन पिटिंग एडिमा वेर एज इन केस ऑफ डिक्रीज लिम्फेटिक ड्रेनेज वट हैपन्स इज देर इज इंक्रीज एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ द लिम्फ एंड लिम्फ कंटेन्स बोथ द प्रोटीन्स एज वेल एज द फ्लूड बट विद टाइम द फ्लूड गेट्स रिजॉल्व बाय द स्मॉल लिम्फेटिक वेसल्स वेर एज द प्रोटीन रिमेन्स एक्यूमुलेटेड सो इनिशियली एज देर इज इंक्रीज फ्लूड प्रेजेंट देर विल बी पिटिंग एडिमा वेर एज लेटर एज द फ्लूड गेट्स रिजॉल्व विद द प्रोटीन रिमेनिंग देर विल बी नॉन पिटिंग एडिमा also there is a uh, another theory for it is as there is a uh, lymph accumulation present lymph accumulation stimulates fibroblasts which leads to sclerosis of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue that we commonly call the lymph uh, lipodermatosclerosis and it can also be the reason for the non pitting edema so with this we have understood that there can be edema which can be either pitting or which can be either non pitting and we'll look for the different causes of the pitting and non pitting edema and have learned their mechanisms now it is seen that if on pressing uh, the pitting edema if the uh, depression resolves within 40 seconds it is uh, probably due to a uh, decreased oncotic pressure that is due to uh, disorders of hyperproteinemia whereas if the depression uh, resolves after 40 second it is usually due to disorder of the high hydrostatic pressure so uh, based on this you can know uh, uh, the pathology underlying the pitting edema now where would you look for the edema this is also very important thing uh, like uh, whenever there is fluid accumulation occurring so the fluid will initially gravitate to the areas where there is maximum uh, dependency like it will uh, gravitate down to the areas of the dependency so if the patient is in uh, ambulatory that is the patient is moving in that case the foot will be the most dependent part so the accumulation will be in the ankle uh, whereas in the case of non ambulatory patient the dependent position will usually be, be the back so the accumulation will be maximum in the sacrum area so we will look in the sacrum Okay now if a patient comes to you with swelling of the lower limb you will first look whether the patient is swelling in the bilateral limb or the unilateral limb if the patient has swelling in the bilateral limb we will press and check if it is pitting or non pitting if it is non pitting the causes can either be a hypothyroidism which occurs due to increased protein accumulation or it can occur due to a bilateral lymphedema which usually occurs in case of congenital lymphedema in this cases there will be non pitting bilateral uh, edema present whereas if the patient bilateral pitting edema it can occur either due to chf due to cld due to nephrotic syndrome due to protein losing enteropathy or due to ckd in chf the patient will characteristically give history that the patient initially had pedal edema which was followed by generalized edema and the patient has less edema in the morning and it increases throughout the day because at the patient moves throughout the day there will be more and more fluid gravitating down to the ankle and there will be more and more pedal edema whereas in case of cld the patient characteristically gives a history that the patient initially had the abdominal distension that is the ascites and it was followed by the pedal edema and then it was followed by the generalized edema whereas in case of nephrotic syndrome the patient will correctly give history the initially patient has periorbital edema which was then uh, uh, spread throughout the face and then followed by the generalized edema and in periorbital edema the patient will give history that the edema is more in the morning as at night the the patient laid, uh, lies down flat so the fluid comes up and accumulates around the orbit whereas in the after the morning as the patient walks the fluid again gravitates down thus decreasing the periorbital edema in case of protein losing enteropathy the patient can have history of chronic diarrhea whereas in case of ckd the patient can have history of decreased urine output or uremia whereas if the patient has uh, unilateral swelling of the lower limb we will uh, think of the local causes first that is we will look for the cellulitis 
we will look for the varicose vein we will think of dvt and we will think of lymphedema in cellulitis we will get redness of the skin associated with pain in varicose vein we will get associated tortuous swelling in case of dvt we will get the characteristic severe bursting pain and there might be history of prolonged immobilization due to trauma or a surgery and in case of lymphedema you will characteristically get a stemmer sign in which when you try to pinch the skin it will not be able to pinch due to underlying lipodermatosclerosis now another thing which you might uh, be asked in the exam is what are the causes of facial edema so the facial edema can occur either due to nephrotic syndrome which we have already discussed it can occur due to sfc obstruction which will also be associated with redness of the face as well as the edema over the chest and the dilated veins present over the chest third it can be due to angioedema second due to drugs like as inhibitors or it can occur due to uh, allergens like peanut allergy it can occur in case of hypothyroidism and it can occur due to parasitic infection like trichinosis and one more important thing which you should know is there are some drugs which can lead to edema like if the patient is long standing hypertensive and he comes to you now with pedal edema but we usually think is that the patient might have developed chf and that might be the reason for developing the pedal edema or the the patient might have go, got into the hypertensive nephropathy and then this might be the region of pedal edema what we uh, forget is the patient for hypertension might be taking calcium channel blockers and that might be the reason for the uh, pedal edema so you should always rule out the drug intake if you get a patient of edema like in case of if the patient is taking ac inhibitors the patient can have edema as in this case there is decreased uh, uh, proteolysis of the bradykinin so the bradykinin increase so there is increased inflammation due to calcium channel blockers and due to nitrate there is increased vasodilation so increased hydrostatic pressure leading to edema whereas in steroids also there can be edema present as the steroid will act on the aldosterone receptor in the kidney leading to increased absorption of salt and water and also in case of NSAIDs you can get edema as NSAIDs will lead to decreased GFR and this will again lead to increased absorption of so sodium and water.